Hey everyone, Daryl here. A few videos ago I asked you what do you want to see? What would you like to see on this channel for content? And a few of you responded that you'd like to see a walk around video of my 2016 Toyota Tacoma. I can do that. So this is my 2016 Toyota Tacoma. I have had it since August of 2016. So I guess it's what, 16 or so months old. And I love, love, love this truck. I'm a Jeep guy, Jeep guy from way back. Don't get me wrong, I still love Jeeps, but this thing just works so fantastic for what I needed. Uh, before this, I had a Jeep Cherokee uh, that on 35s, just like this truck is on 35s, and that was great, but I couldn't pull a camper with it. I couldn't fit as much gear in it. So I made the swap over to the Toyota Tacoma, and man, it's just been really great. And this is where I'm at on the build status with it right now. I've got plans, like everyone has plans, and I'll go over those a little bit, but right now this is where we're sitting. So let's walk around it. The first thing we can talk about is the stance of this truck. This truck is running a BDS six inch lift with Fox's coilovers up front. And I love, love, love the stance of this truck on a six inch lift. I think I might actually have the coilovers lower to about five or five and a half. I haven't measured exactly, but with the 35 inch ridge graps, man, this thing, I love it. I love the stance. And a lot of people complain and poo poo drop brackets kits, drop bracket kits, and I get it. Um, I understand people's complaints about them, about ground clearance and stuff, but for what I do, for the kind of four wheeling I do, for pulling my camper, for those CV angles right there, look at that, straight. Uh, this works great for me. Uh, I'm not going to take this truck rock crawling or like serious, serious rock crawling, but there's plenty of clearance up front, I promise you. And it rides great and it pulls my camper awesome. This lift is fantastic. Um, so that's that for the lift. These are, like I said, 35 inch Nitto Ridge Graps. They're the metric size, but they're right around 35 inch on 18 inch Mamba wheels in bronze. I like the bronze and blue combo. I love these tires. A lot of people ask me about them, how they work. Man, they're great. If you're thinking about it, get them. They look cool, they work great. I'm a huge fan of Nitto tires, so that's my recommendation on those. Uh, no wheel spacers, I believe, and don't quote me on this, I'll have to look it up. The back spacing on these wheels is five inches. They're nine by five, I believe. I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, they could be a, a four and a half or a four and three quarter, but I'm pretty sure that they're five. So that's that on that part. Sorry, my shadow's in the way. Uh, this is our strike front bumper from Victory 4x4. It's actually the very first strike bumper, the prototype, or the third prototype, the one that actually fit. But looks fantastic. These are for sale on the website right now. No tube work, I like the clean look without tube. I've got a VR8S worn hidden in there, VR8 with synthetic rope, and the Factory 55 flat link. That works really good. And then these lights that are probably flashing since they're LEDs, these are Pia's lights. And the cool thing about Pia's lights is that reflector right there that's going to wig the camera out, that reflector actually has a cutoff. So these are DOT, well SAE, DOT, let me see, they're SAE, I don't see a DOT stamp on there, but I'll double check that before I post this video and comment link below. But these things work awesome, they have a really sweet cutoff so you're not blinding other drivers. I have them in the grill as well. And the cool thing about the grill lights is that also SAE stamped, that that's a true fog light. So that's not gonna throw light forever down the trailer down the road. That's gonna throw a really wide, nice pattern just like a true fog light. So I use that light a lot when it's snowy or foggy and it works great. Unlike the um, single row 20 inch bar, and that thing just throws light for forever. That's not a Pia, that's a cheapy import, but that's what you turn on when there's no one in front of you, when you're leading the trail, uh, or else you'll blind people. But these driving lights and the uh, Pia fog lights work really great and they don't blind people in front of you and that's awesome. The grill is a prototype. This is a Victory 4x4 prototype, the first prototype. We've got some work to do on it. So you'll probably see that released pretty soon. It will not include the FJ40 Toyota logo. Obviously there's rights that we can't violate with that. You know, Toyota owns the name Toyota. But you can put whatever logo you want or badge you want in there. All that does, that's an FJ40 badge and it just drill a couple holes and it screws right on. I really like the way that looks. That's the front. 
Uh, on the side, we have our Victory sliders with tube. They bolt on the frame, completely bolt on. Uh, there's two holes to drill into the frame if you want like full body weight drops on this truck. I haven't drilled them. I'm running them without those drilled because I want to see, do some product testing and see how they handle up in the full bolt-on environment. My recommendation is right now, if you get these, drill the two optional holes underneath. If you watch the installation video, you will see what I'm talking about. So far, these have been great on the Michigan trails that I've had them on. A couple little tree turns and some, you know, some roots and stuff, and they've worked great. We don't have a ton of rocks in Michigan, but we have the same style on all of our Wranglers and our Cherokees, and they hold up fantastic. I mean, we just beat the crap out of these, so I have no worries about that. On the back, we have our Victory bed rack. This is a half rack style rack, so it only goes up you know, just about half of the cab height. And then there's tons of options for mounting. We do these little, you can probably see these one by one bars here that bolt on, and those kind of mimic like a Thule or a Yakima um, roof rack. So I've got ski snowboard, I think these are just snowboard, but I use them for skis too. Rack on this side that just bolts on those one by one bars. And then this other side, I'm running just a standard roof mount bike rack rail that holds a through axle. And usually in the summer, spring, fall, I run two of these, but I've got that ski snowboard one over there right now. But it looks like the snow is mostly gone, so I can probably put my other bike rack on there. High lift jack mount. Yeah, this is meant to be universal. You can you know, mount whatever you like on it. And then this basket, this is a prototype from JCR Off-Road. It is supposed to be for the four-door Wranglers, just a hard top mount, but it works great on this. So I think we will change the whole pattern a little bit or add more holes so it bolts on our Tacoma half rack as well. And then I just have, I believe there's a fist, fist quick or quick fist clamps that I'm holding my shovel on this side x on that side and then i undermounted my rotopex cans so i have a nice flat basket up there on top one thing that's really cool about this victory half rack is that we designed it so that if you have a tanu cover like this roll-up tanu that doesn't come over the edge the bed rail edge it fits so see that clearance right there so this roll-up tanu tano 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 whatever cover totally fits um, it's a little difficult to roll up just because there's not a lot of height here, but it is possible. I leave mine on basically all the time, but if I have to roll it up, I certainly can. I just don't do it that often. And on the back, we have our Victory rear bumper, and this works with the factory receiver hitch. These trucks pull a lot, uh, and we did not want to mess with that tow rating at all. So we kept the factory receiver and just added on a bumper that can uh, work with it and then these are the pia scene lights or these are awesome because these just throw a ton of light everywhere with that with that lens on there these are great for backing up they're great for getting the campsite ready at night they're really awesome i really dig ps lighting super happy with that and then i fit a full-size 35 inch spare underneath there the internet said it could not be done but i done did it i don't know if you can see but i had to bend out Probably just do a video on that because it's hard to tell. I had to bend out that bracket and I had to bend out a bunch of stuff <laughs> underneath, but not too much, maybe a half an inch. And then the exhaust kind of rests on it, but there's a guard right where it rests on it. This exhaust out here doesn't get that hot, see? Doesn't really matter that it rests on the tire. So that works awesome. What else is going on? Got a bed rug. It's Works really great. I'm surprised it doesn't, you know, it's wet pretty often. I'm surprised it doesn't get stinky, but nope. Pretty cool. Gear bags for bike stuff, recovery gear, air up kit, my camp chair, a green, random green screen that needs to be washed. Then I just have some cheap Amazon lights that I put on the uh, tanu cover. So that lights up, and then you can turn it off with this. So what I did was I installed, this is a, um, a hood pin switch or like a door switch, just a universal door pin switch. So what happens is when the tail gets closed, lights go off. When the tail gets open, it grounds, the lights come on. And if you leave the tail get down for whatever reason, I put a switch back here 
to turn them off permanently. And then I mounted a accessory thing. I just drilled into the uh, fiberglass on the bed here and mounted that. It's got a uh, cigarette lighter plug. It has a USB and it has a voltmeter just to tell me what the battery is at. And this is on all the time. So when I'm camping or whatever I'm doing, I can plug in my phone or plug in my radio or whatever I want to a USB port or the cigarette lighter port and it will charge it. So if I need to charge something, I can plug it in there, throw it in one of my baskets, close the tailgate, lock it, not worry about it and it charges all the time because the the sig or the uh, accessory things inside the cab only come on with the key and I haven't messed with fixing that. So right now that's my solution. And then I installed, I don't know who makes it, but somebody makes a linear actuator lock that works with your door locks here. It's on so it won't, the truck's on so it won't lock. But So that works really awesome. So then I don't have to worry about locking and unlocking my tailgate here and my stuff is semi-secure. I know you can just take a knife and slash this open pretty easily, but it's out of sight at least. And that locks and unlocks with the keel sentry. So I think that's all that's out here. If you have any questions about anything, just you know, go ahead and shoot me that question in the comments below. Well, let's check out inside. So pretty stock interior. I did order the catskin leather seats when I ordered the truck from my dealer. Oh, they're black with black perf. And the black perf, you probably can't see it, but it's got like a blue, there it is. A blue backer to the black perf, so that looks really neat. Blue thread, blue stitching, and then the TRD logo stitched in the back there. I really like them. And the best part is leather is so uh, strong, or durable, rather, that when the dog is in here or whatever, when I'm all gross from camping or four-wheeling, I can just jump in and not worry about the seats getting destroyed or soaked or gross so that's why I went with leather I think you can get leather now in the new trucks I think you can order leather I think the fake leather was all you could order before I have brake controller floating right there uh, prodigy whatever that's our camper is 22 feet and it weighs about 4,000 pounds wet so truck pulls it awesome but you definitely need a brake controller for that so let's hop up in here go over some stuff Oh, oh, I got my remote here. This, this is a wireless remote for my Warren, so I don't have to plug in the control inside the bumper. You reach down between the grill and the radiator on the front to op you know to unlock or lock or free spool the winch, but once you get that done, you can just run it with this wireless controller, so that's pretty cool. I mean, technically, you could spool it out with this too, but that would take forever and be kind of lame, so... Um, I have my Switch Pros panel that is kind of Frenched right there on the headliner. I don't know if you have this option if you don't have a sunroof. I haven't looked at the non-sunroof trucks to see if you have this option or not, but if you do, it's a great spot for it. Awesome spot for it. I really, really like the Switch Pros panel. I think I did a video on it on this channel already. It just works awesome. Super happy with that. Uh, I have a full kicker audio system in here, and that is where I hide the bass knob. So, well, it's not really a bass knob. That's kind of 1990s terminology, but the amplifier for the subwoofer, you can turn up or lower the gain to the preset amount that you have on the amp. So you set the gain on the amps. Gain should always be set based on the power that you're running and the speaker that you have. And then this can change the... Um, the gain from all the way to the top, which is your preset maximum on the amp, to all the way to nothing. So that's really handy. If I don't want to mess with bass or whatever, I can just turn all the way down, and that's great. Works really awesome. Uh, I'm running, you can't see it, but I'm running their KS series components in the doors, and then the tweeters in the factory location on the dash with wiring adapter. So I didn't splice in or cut any of the factory wiring. I'm running some, I don't know, generic wire adapters to wire the factory wiring from the Tacoma onto the speakers. And then I'm running a kicker amplifier as well. So I've got one amplifier, a uh, two channel amplifier for the front components, and then the crossovers are hidden up inside the dash. And then I have one amp 500 watts kicker for the uh, 12 inch sub. And I'll show you the sub in a second. Sounds really awesome. No problems whatsoever with that. The integration with the factory deck or the factory nav unit, head unit, 
obviously could be better, but that's a problem across all new vehicles. It's getting harder and harder to add aftermarket stereo systems to vehicles now, but it works pretty well just using the line outs from the factory audio system into the kicker amps. And you, you can add like, um, like some signal converters or whatever, add, I know they make boxes to add to fine tune, adjust equalizers and such, but I haven't found any for that. I think it really sounds great. Great as is. So I don't know what else. Got a tablet mount coming that mounts on this, this trim ring right here. I think it's from Hondo, Hondo Garage maybe. Uh, I have a 10-inch tab that I'm going to use with maps on it because uh, we got kind of lost in the forest service roads when we pre-ran the course for our winter overlanding trip. And it'd be really handy if I just had the forest service maps right here on a tablet. So Hondo makes one that it's a no drill that mounts on this ring. And I think that'll work okay for now. But what I'd really like is a way to mount things up here above this uh this dash part right here and i think we can come up with something that'll work for that because i'm gonna have my tablet i'm gonna have a cb mic i'm a ham so i'm probably gonna mount a ham radio um like a detachable face plate i got lots of things to mount and i would like it to look clean so my phone usually just sticks right up on here on this magnet so so yeah we'll see what what comes on the pipe but for now i'm gonna just use that hondo mount that mounts on the trim ring just so it's clean i don't like a bunch of bunch of mess and clutter everywhere. I think that's everything that is up here. I can show you, uh, show you the amp, or sorry, I can't show you the amps, but I can show you the sub. The amps are buried on the other side, but I'm using, um, I'm using the Taco Tunes 12 inch box that is a spray on bed liner or whatever, and then a Kicker RT 12 that's a shallow mount that takes a very small volume box. I think this box is like 0.65 and the minimum for this kicker is 0.55. And what I'd really, I think I'm gonna cut the factory, um, there's like a factory tray unit that goes back here. I think I'm gonna cut this portion off so I can cover this blue sheet metal behind. I know it really doesn't matter, but I think it would look a lot better if I cut that piece and then I'm gonna mod the other side. That's why that side is out right now. Mod the other side and mount the amps on it. So I still have room on the bottom on those little trays, but so it looks finished. Right now it looks like not finished and that kind of bothers me. So I'll work on that. I don't keep the headrests on because they just get, honestly get in the way. Man, I think that's it. Uh, oh, I can show you um, under the hood real fast, I guess. So a lot of people are gonna ask me why I bought a sport instead of an off-road. And I did that because I wanted color matched fender flares and a hood scoop and I didn't really want the factory locker and I don't care about crawl control and hill assist and whatever that other garbage is I just don't I just don't care about that so that's why I went with the sport and then I knew that I was going to re-gear it so I added there's my compressor for my ARB locker I'm running a rear ARB right now and I'll probably add a front ARB at some point that's kind of the plan. So that's my compressor I'm using for the locker and I'm also using that to air up tires. And then my Switch Pro is mounted right there on that fender and then that's my power lead for my kicker. And some friends at Genesis make a dual battery setup for this and I think I might talk to them about that. I'll probably have to move, I'll have to move that Switch Pro setup. I think the dual battery goes right here but I'm kind of interested in that. I think I might need a little more power so I think a Genesis dual battery setup and some Odyssey batteries is on the agenda for sure. But besides that, that's pretty standard for now. You can see there's a the winch hiding down there. Other things you can't see, uh, nitro gear, 488 gears in the front and rear, obviously, to turn these big tires to pull the camper. Man, they work awesome. It was a super great install. You get solid spacers instead of the crushed sleeves. That works great too. So I, I'm pretty sure that is everything on the truck right now. I've got plans. I need a cooler. Uh, so I think I'm just going to go, or refrigerator rather. I need a refrigerator. And I'm looking at Dometic stuff. That stuff looks really great. So I think I'll run uh, a Dometic refrigerator. And I'm thinking maybe rooftop tent. Um, just for the times we don't have the camper and I don't want a hammock camp 
and maybe I just want a quick setup, and it looks like you can set a rooftop tent up really fast. And also I'll get an awning, so I might pull that basket off and throw a rooftop tent up there. But we'll see on that. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, throw them in the comments below. I know this was a long video, but I wanted to go over everything. I hope I didn't miss anything. If I did, just let me know and I'll make another quick video for you. But thanks for watching, and as always, let me know what you want to see on this channel. Talk to you later.